comedy this morning. I just wanted to congratulate everyone who participated in the Independence Day last week, especially the youth. But let me just tell you uh, the secret behind everything. Remember the gospel last Sunday? Jesus said, don't rejoice because you did all these marvelous works, but rejoice rather that your names are written in the book of life. Remember last week's gospel? Okay. So great works and marvelous works will always be done, but the key or the most important thing is that your names are written in the book of life. You know what? Uh, let me just give you an illustration for you to understand that verse, kids. Okay? Nowadays, people are into Facebook, right? And in Facebook, you have uh, some friends, a list of friends. If you don't like a particular friend, you delete them out of your list of friends, right? right? Some people, they add new friends. They like to have this long list of friends. Well, the most important, really, is that in God's Facebook, your names are li listed as His friend. In other words, you have a relationship with God. That's the most important thing. Some people are wondering, they say, well, your youth are really talented. Last Christmas, they had a wonderful presentation in Pascosa Paris. And then now, again, full of life. Okay? And I was telling Miki the other day, yes, uh, thanks me to Sister Pachi, to Sister Lumen, to, uh, uh, to Imelda, to, to Miki, and to everyone. But you see, the secret is because all those little ones who were performing there serve God every Sunday in church. Sarah is here, Mary Claire is here, you know, Robbie Jett is here, all the little ones, even John Benedict, you know. And the secret is their relationship with God. Because they serve God every Sunday, somehow God's favor is always upon them. There's that life that you cannot explain and cannot understand. Just like when David fought against Goliath, it was not because David was good or skillful in, in fighting wars, but because God was with him. Okay? So don't neglect your relationship with God. That's the most important thing. Don't stop serving God. Serve God all the days of your life. See, everyone here, you know, even the actualized, everyone, all of you who participated in You've been serving God every Sunday, day in, day out. And you don't realize it, that the life of God is in you. It will take, you know, even the ambassador jumping up and down for you to recognize that it's something different. There's something different. And that difference is that your names are listed in God's Facebook. Okay. Amen? Amen. So make sure that your names are written there. Okay, now, um, I want to share today on today's gospel. The story of the Good Samaritan is a very common and familiar story for all of us. And you can look at it in two different ways, uh, allegorically or symbolically, and morally. Okay? So first, allow me to just share with you the symbolic meaning of the Good Samaritan. Um, it says there that there was a man. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Jerusalem is a symbol of being in communion with God. Jerusalem was the place where the temple was. It, was. it meant that 
It, was, it is a place of being in peace with God. On the other hand, Jericho is known as a place of sin. And if you were to go to that particular place, it will take you 17 miles journeying eastward from Jerusalem to Jericho. And it is descending, okay? it's about 3,200 3, feet from, Jer uh, from Jerusalem to Jericho. And it's rough terrain, and because it was rough terrain, it was a target for bandits and thieves. So you could say symbolically that this man was backsliding from having a communion with God to going far away from God and going to the city of sin. And because of that, when a person separates himself from God and breaks his relationship with God, there's that natural consequence of falling into the hands of thieves. Who do you think is the master of thieves? What does the Bible say? John chapter 10. Right? The thief does not come to steal, to kill and destroy. So, symbolically, this, this man who was walking away from God was attacked by the devil and his cohorts. And they robbed him, they beat him, and left him half dead. And then you find the priest and the Levites, which were like the Old Testament uh, priests and, and servants in the Old Testament, who ignored this person who, was, who had fallen away from God. Many self-righteous people would separate themselves from such people. And yet there was a Samaritan who came. Now, who is this Samaritan? The Samaritan was a foreigner. Symbolically, the Samaritan is an image of our Lord Jesus Christ, who came down from heaven to save men who have made themselves his enemies. So in spite of the fact that Adam, or man, turned his back on God, our Lord Jesus Christ came from heaven to save us from our sins. In spite of the fact that the enemy sometimes steals from us, beats us, and leaves us half dead, he showed us his compassion and love. Very few people, St. Paul says in Ephesians, would love their enemies. Sometimes it's even hard to love a person that you love in times of need. But to care for someone who is your enemy is a very difficult thing. And man has made, we have made ourselves enemies of God because we turn away from his ways. But in spite of that, our Lord Jesus Christ came and bandaged our wounds. He poured oil and wine, gave us the Holy Spirit, and gave us the sacraments. Every time you receive the body and blood of Jesus, he gives you his own body, his life. And every time his blood touches your lips, your sins are washed away. And then, notice, he brings them to an inn. He brings him to an inn. The inn is symbolic of the church, where he's taken care of. And then he gives two, in particular, two coins, two denarii. What are the two denarii? The Old and the New Testament. The Bible. That's what the early church fathers of God gave to the Word of God to take care of you, to 
to be your light, to be your lamp. And then it says, I am willing to even pay the cost, pay the price. That is what our Lord Jesus Christ did for you and for me. He loved us. What are we supposed to do? Well, in our prayer this morning, in, uh, in the calling today, it says there, um, Lord, I pray that we may know and understand what things we ought to do, and also may have the grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. In a relationship, a loving relationship, when one reaches out in love, the other partner has to respond. So our response to the love of God should be love. He reached out to love us, we are to love in return. St. John says, we love because he first loved us. If you look at our lives, we have made many mistakes in our lives. But God can turn around our mistakes to something really good. Sometimes we feel, you know, yesterday I was talking to the guys and Brother Manny was there and he said, he said, you know, I made many mistakes in life. But you know what? All these things, all these lessons which we learn can be turned around in such a way that God will now bring into our midst people who are going through the same problems we went through before. Maybe a young man will come to Brother Man and say, Puya, gusto ko ng maliwa. And he can look at him and say, Huwag mong gagawin yan, just ang puno yan. Many things, many experiences that we went through, perhaps one of these days, someone who is suffering from cancer, will come to Sister Remy and say, you know, how are you able to overcome? I feel like giving up. I feel like the world has caved in. So even the trials and the tests that we go through can be testimonies for other people. You understand? So God will bring to our midst. He will not allow you to be tested beyond what you're able. People who will be going through the same people who perhaps are being robbed, being beaten, or being left half dead by Satan. Now God is going to give you the opportunity to minister to them. Now I'd like to give my second homily. Now that we realize that our Lord loves us, how are we to respond in love? Well, now this is where the gospel can be seen also as a challenge for us that we may know what we ought to do in our life. Some people have no direction in life. They don't know what to do. And what God gave us a boy? Well, Jesus says this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. Is there independence day? <laughs> We already had hours, so let them celebrate their independence. It says, I love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Notice the question that was asked Jesus was, who is my neighbor? And this is what he meant. To answer that question, he used this particular parable. Love God and love your neighbor. He says, do this and you will live. Go and do likewise. If we look at it, there are people who come our way who may be in a desperate situation. And some of them, it's because of their separation from God. As Christians, we shouldn't say, because 
Many people are traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. Some may have been a part of this church before. And they're going not from Jericho to Jerusalem, but from Jerusalem to Jericho. And then little by little, we are beginning to see it doesn't come overnight. But little by little, the enemy will begin to rob them and beat them down. What are we supposed to do? We are supposed to be channels of the love of God. First thing that Jesus did was to bandage the wounds. The sacramentals, churches say that this is the garment of baptism. A while ago we had baptism, we baptized Vincent. So he had a blue shirt on in his back and a white shirt on. I said, balik tayo natin kasi dapat mag-enchant ang suit of white. Now this was the bandage. The bandage of the wounds of the man beaten is symbolic of love that covers a multitude of sins. Unfortunately, there are some Christians who have not overcome their gossiping tongue. And instead of bandaging the wounds, they like to show everyone that they know every story. Every new news. So lahat ng pinaka-latest na balita sa simbahan, gusto nila ikalak nila. Alam ko yan. <laughs> Kala mo, lahat ng sikreto, alam ko yan. <laughs> and instead of helping, they open the wounds for bacteria and viruses to come in. Love covers a multitude of sins. So when you find out about some problem or some secret that the person is going through and they're trying to heal that, shut your mouth. Bandage the wound. Bandage the wound. It's not how much you know, or whether you know everything that's going on inside the church that makes you a mature Christian. Sometimes silence is golden. Pagdasal nyo na lang yung tao kaysa yung chismis nyo. The second thing, that Jesus did, which we should copy, is he poured oil and wine. Administer, ministry, minister to them, minister to, to the sick, bring healing into their lives. Lead them to church, bring them to church so perhaps they can partake of the Eucharist. I guess for some, the oil is like the oil of gladness. Exhort and encourage them. For example, someone made a real big mistake, a real big boo-boo in their life, and they feel so depressed. And so one person told me, says, I mean, Father, I think God made me to go to hell. All I do is sin. But I tell them, with God's help, you can overcome. You can rise up. Even this mistake, God can turn it around to make it a testimony so that other people will not make the same mistake. Exhort and encourage with the oil of gladness. And pronounce the forgiveness. The wine is symbolic of the mercy and forgiveness of God. Some people, instead of saying, God is a merciful God, He will forgive you. Some people, they go and say, Ah, see, I told you, you're hard at it, you're going to hell. Go to hell. Instead of giving them the oil and the wine, pronounce the absolution of God. God has forgiven you. There is no sin 
that God will not forgive. To the humble and contrite heart, God is well pleased. And then the next thing that our Lord Jesus did was he carried and supported, put him on his animal and carried and supported the person who had difficulty walking. Sometimes we need to be a crutch to someone physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We need to be by their side. Sometimes we're afraid because we feel that we don't want to commit ourselves to look after people. But our Lord Jesus Christ put them on the Good Samaritan put him on his own dump and carried him. Bring him to the inn. I guess one of the greatest things that you could do to a person who's trying to run away from church is to convince that person to go to church. Some people when they committed commit a very grave sin they feel that they have no right to come to church. Or they say, Pare, matutura mo ko They feel like they're melting, like wax. But you can tell them, in the world outside, there is no forgiveness. But in the church, that's where you find forgiveness. It is in God that you find mercy. And then you take care of them. He took care of the man. You know, many, many people, they just go and say, well, don't worry, brother, I'm going to pray for you. Or sis, I'll pray for you. The Good Samaritan took care of him. I remember one lesson I learned from Bishop Constantino many years ago. He said, Father Don, it's not what you expect from people. It's what you inspect. In other words, it's not just a matter of telling them this or do that or do this, but you have to follow them up. You have to find out system to Are you okay? Keep on following the person up. Nurse their wounds. You know, when a, when a nurse wound, uh, nurses the wounds of someone, it's not just one one bandage. Yeah, she has to go back and the following day clean it again and put another bandage again until it heals. And then there's that two denarii, the willingness to pay the price and also the willingness to share the word of God, the Old and the New Testament. Jesus asked this question, which I think he's asking us today as well. Who of, this, who of these three, the priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan, loved his neighbor? You know, sometimes uh, people have a very high regard for those who are investors whether deacons, or priests, or bishops. But I tell you, being a deacon, a priest, or a bishop is meaningless unless our deeds back up our titles. To be a clergy is, as the patriarch says, ontological. It has nothing to do of whether you're wearing your vestments or not. Ni pwede sabihin ng tao, uh, Father, hindi ako naka-vestment ngayon eh. Ni pwede sabihin ng deacon, oh, Deacon, can you pray for that person? He's sick. Visit that. Father, hindi ako naka-vestment ngayon. Your being a deacon has nothing to do with your vestments. It's ontological. It means it's your, it's, it's the reason for your being. 
You are a beacon whether you're wearing your vestments or not. But don't just come at the priests. The second person here was the Levite. In other words, a member of the worship team. It doesn't mean that you play so well, you sing so well, and then you see someone in need, you turn your back. You'd be just like the, the Levite here, the second guy who walked past by the person in need. Doesn't matter whether you sing well, or you play well, or you dance well. When there is a person in need in front of you, God wants you to minister to that person in need. So his question was this, who of the three loved his neighbor? The priest, the Levite, or the foreigner? Mm. I guess the question that Christ wants us to ask today is if we are willing now to love because he loved us. We did not deserve his love because we were the ones who were hard-headed. We did many mistakes in our lives, including myself. But God still loved us in spite of our mistakes. The question is, are we now willing to be channels or instruments of love? I like Pope Francis very much. He said when he sat as Pope, you should bring the Eucharist outside the walls of your church. Ah. You should bring the life outside. You should bring your Christianity outside. That's why I'm so proud of the young people. Because in the midst of the Pascos of Paris, in the midst of the Pistas of Paris, the life of God, you see. Pope Francis says, it's not just a matter of just receiving Eucharist here, but you have to bring your Christianity outside. Reach out to those people who are in need. There are many people, even in the Filipino community, who may be at the point of depression, who are at the point of Suicide. And sometimes it's because of their own fault. Well, God could have said to this person who was beaten and left half dead, You left Jerusalem, you're going to Jericho. You can say, Well, you can't say that. But those are the times where God will give us the opportunity to love like Him. What are we supposed to do in our life? Love God. Continue to do what you're doing. Serve God here in church. Sing to Him, worship Him. Love your neighbor as well. Some people say, well, Father, me, I, I do neither. I just keep to myself and mind my own business. I mean like the priest and the Levite. To watch a person being stripped and wounded and abandoned to die a slow and painful death is not just apathy but it is being a silent instrument of death. It's either we are a channel of death or a channel of life. There are people in the Filipino community who are channels of death. They try to smuggle drugs in, they think only about getting money, and they destroy people's lives. Some men, they hop from one young lady to another. Mga gigolo. Siguro na pala tulad yung pelikula ni... 
Richard Gere. <laughs> Hindi nga lang American Gigolo, Pinoy Gigolo. 